Okay, let's talk about the law of large numbers. This is not too difficult of a concept to understand. Uh, it has to do with probability, and uh, it's definitely important that you uh, uh, learn it and understand it, but it's not that difficult. So we're going to get into this in a second. If you're a math student, um, and I'm assuming that you may be, if you're watching this video <clears throat> and you like the way I teach, um, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I have tons of, literally hundreds of videos on various math subjects. Uh, so hope you become a subscriber. If you decide to, make sure to hit that bell notification to get my latest uh, videos. I also offer uh, full, uh, complete math courses. I'll leave the link in the description um, of this video if you're interested in, in checking those out. But with that being said, let's get into the law of large numbers. So <clears throat> this is actually, um, it's pretty uh, powerful principle and has to do with probability, okay? So when we study the subject of probability, for example, what's the probability? Let's say here, if I have a coin, all right, let's say a, a coin has heads and tails, right? So if I say, what's the probability if you flip that coin uh, uh, in the air, it's going to land on heads, okay? So most of you probably could be like, well, it's 50% chance, right? So you got um, only two outcomes here. And when you flip this, you got a 50% chance of getting heads or tails, right? So in probability, we're always trying to determine or predict outcomes. But when you study probability, we basically look at probability in two different ways, okay? It's kind of structured um, uh, in, well, let me just kind of get to it. It's kind of laid out in two different manners. We have what we call experimental probability. And then we have what we call a theoretical um, probability. So I'm just kind of abbreviating here, but hopefully you get the uh, gist of what I'm saying. So <clears throat> uh, experimental and theoretical um, are, are different, okay? So let me kind of um, use this example with the heads and tails. So if I wanted to know the theoretical probability of... of um, of flipping this coin and it landing on heads, well, we've already determined that we have a one out of two chance or 50% probability that that's going to occur. Now, let's suppose we're kind of messing around with this coin and we actually start running an experiment, okay? And you flip you flip the, uh, the coin and, it, and you get tails. You're like, okay, well, it didn't turn out the way, you know, uh, I still have a 50% chance. So on my next... Uh, trial, my next experiment, you know, I should hopefully get heads. What happened? in case okay, so the next time you flip, you get tails again. And then you keep getting tails, tails, and you're like, well, well what's going on here, right? This is not quite exactly what you ex expected, right? Maybe you're on this bad streak and you're like, oh man, I can't get heads. I, I should get, uh, you know, I have 50% chance of getting this, you know, to become a head, but I'm, I'm landing with all these tails. So this is kind of an unexpected um, outcome, okay? So you're running an experiment, and your experiment is not kind of like, um, you know, matching what your theoretical or mathematical probability is stating, right? So when you study uh, probability from a, a mathematical, pure mathematical manner, we really get into what we call theoretical probability. But experimental probability is important because if we're running these experiments and it's not matching up to what we expect, well, then there's a disconnect, right? Well, this is where the law of large numbers comes in. And it says your outcome, okay, your expected outcome here is not going to necessarily match up perfectly with the theoretical um, expected outcome. So you're expecting 50% of the, of the time that you're going to get heads. Now I ran four trials here, right? So you, you would expect that 50%, uh, maybe half of those trials should have showed up heads, but it didn't. Okay, so you're like, well, what's going on? Okay, well, here's the deal. The law of large numbers basically states that you're not going to, your experimental outcomes is not going to get, going to be necessarily um, close to the theoretical outcome unless you run a large number of trials. So here I have run, only run four trials, but let's say I've conducted this experiment out like a thousand times, right? When I um, 
you know, I did this uh, flip of the coin, and now we're measuring recording heads and tails. Now, when I've done that, when I'm re recording this, and I've done this experiment a thousand times, it's going to be very close to 50%. Close to 50% of the time um, is going to be heads or tails, depending, okay? And if I run this out even larger, like 100,000 experiments, it's even going to, we expect it to become even closer to our theoretical outcome. So we have experimental out, um, uh, expectations. Okay, this is like real, real world stuff, right? Like we're running experiments. We're expecting this experiment to have the result of what we kind of calculated in advance. Well, that's only going to uh, be the case if you run um, a larger number of trials. So if you only have a few um, ex trials in your experiment, and it's not coming out to be what you're what you kind of calculated with the probability. Well, that's because of the law of large numbers. All right. Now, the, it, you kind of get into some more um, concepts here when you study this in more detail, like relative frequency and how we actually calculate that. I don't want to want to get into that in this video because that's, uh, you know, we could still understand the gist of what this means by just, uh, you know, with this basic example. Right. So, again, take our little coin here, we expect that 50% of the time we're going to get heads or tails, okay? And if we were only run a few trials and we get a bunch of tails, we're like, what's going on here? We should have gotten at least some of heads and some tails, right? Well, again, the larger, the larger the number of trials you conduct, the closer the outcome is going to get become to that theoretical probability. So, Big, it's a big concept in probability, um, and this is a, a large uh, topic in and of itself, but it's important that you understand it, and it's not that difficult when we just look at the, at the general um, uh, concept of it. All right, I don't think we need to go any further than this. Um, again, there's more details on that, but I don't think are, they're necessarily relevant for you just to get the basic gist um, of the law of large numbers. Again, um, you know, I try to do videos, uh, you know, frequently on my channel. So if you like my teaching style, hopefully uh, you'll consider becoming a subscriber. If you do, make sure you hit that bell notification. If you want to um, check out my full complete courses, I'll leave a link to my Tabit Class Math Academy uh, in the description of this video. And if you enjoy the video, uh, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And please leave me some feedback. It's the only way I know how I'm doing, how I can improve, and it gives me ideas on what I can do um, when people might request a particular math topic or have a particular question. Um, you know, it gives me ideas on future videos. So with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time and have a great day.